Good evening everyone, welcome to Tom Plays XCOM Enemy Unknown for Absolute Beginners. This is uh, quite an old game now, although I'm going to persistently think of it as the new version, because I go quite a way back with it, but uh, the internet for some reason seems to be divided between people who think this game is ridiculously easy and people who think it's really hard, so this is for the people who think it's really hard. I'm uh, not claiming to be particularly good at it, so I don't know if it's easy, will probably be laughing at me, but I'm going to be using general tactics rather than stuff specific to this game necessarily, and hopefully for anyone who has found this difficult, or games like this, because they're all kind of similar, it'll actually be helpful. So, on the standard loading screen, I'm just going to go with normal, particularly fancy. Um, I'm not going to worry about the tutorial or Iron Man. I do usually play on Iron Man. And there's going to be some animations to this so I'll probably be quiet for most of them. Nice quote from Arthur C. Clarke there. extraterrestrial incursion, this Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. You have been chosen to lead this initiative, to oversee our first and last line of defense. Your efforts will have considerable influence on this planet's future. We urge you to keep that in mind as you proceed. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> so there you go, that's the initial premise, aliens have attacked the Earth. I've always uh, rather liked this story as a concept. Okay, so if you are doing the tutorial, you're limited to North America or Europe as your starting bases. Each has a different advantage which you can get later but because of the way we will be playing this we're probably not going to get them anytime soon so I'm gonna go with North America or Europe I might uh, let's see either is good I'll go with Europe that's where I live why not France is sending an urgent mission request We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. Okay, so this is our mission screen. <laughs> you see this a lot, so it doesn't really give you any very important um, information, apart from there's no civilians on the site. We're literally just eliminating everything.
Strike one, this is central. You are free to engage all hostile contacts in the AO. Don't take any chances. Okay, right, so this is where we start off. I'm hopefully not going to make anyone sick with the screen moving around. Because it's very easy to move it quite a lot. So, in terms of the control system, I'm going to try and stick to mouse control so it's obvious what I'm doing, hopefully. Moving to the edge of the screen it moves it. One of the first things I tend to do is work out where the corners of the screen are, which you can sort of see by these red lines and the fact that it doesn't go any further. So we've got a handy corner here, so we know there won't be any aliens in this direction. There could in theory be some behind this wall, I'm pretty confident there won't be. So even though I'm going to really push for risk minimization, I'm going to make that as an assumption. Okay, so what else do we have? We have a bunch of controls. You really do not want to use that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used that end turn. I suppose it could be useful in some circumstances. Soldier info I don't usually bother with. It's just one of those things. Most of what matters about soldiers is kept in their individual profession, which we'll get into later. These allow us to choose which soldier we want to move next. You just switch between them, and this allows us to rotate the camera. So we will definitely be using all of these. This area here is a sort of evacuation area. Unlike some previous XCOM games, you do not want to be evacuating. I suppose it's theoretically possible, but this game, particular one, is not very well geared up to allow you to fail missions. So we really, if possible, want to succeed in every mission. We can lose people, but actually failing a mission is asking for trouble. Okay, so what are we dealing with? You do start to get quite familiar with the maps. This one... Yeah, there's an interesting one. I've never actually had this as an opening screen before. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, one thing it will emphasise in the tutorial, which is actually quite good, is getting soldiers into cover. There are two types of cover. I suppose three types, if you count what they've got now, which is no cover at all. There's a full cover, represented by a complete shield, and partial cover, represented by half a shield. Full cover is great if you can get it, but you should always have at least half cover, except in certain specific circumstances. So I'm going to move this guy to full cover. One thing I'm going to be doing that it does not emphasise in the tutorial is playing quite defensively. This works better in some of these games than in this one. So here it's called Overwatch. In effect, I've used half my turn to move, I can now use the other half to Overwatch. And that basically means if any enemies start moving, I will take a shot at them. It just, from my point of view, it just stops enemies from being able to move at will. I'm going to risk dashing here. So the other thing I didn't mention was this blue line indicates how far we can move with half our turn and still have a chance to shoot or do overwatch. The yellow line indicates how far we can move with all our turn, which it calls dashing. The only other thing about dashing is you're more likely to be missed if someone shoots at you while you're moving. And that's for when the enemy is using overwatch. But as you see, this soldier's turn was instantly over, so she cannot defend herself if something shows up. I'm assuming at the moment, given I'm assuming there's nothing over here, that most of our attacks are going to come from this direction. Which is why, in terms of cover, I'm mostly facing that way. I do watch here as well. However, in this case, there's also a building, so we're going to need to infiltrate that as well. So I might actually send this guy dashing as well. And now we see how aliens move. This is a turn-based game, so you can, if nothing else, think for a long time before you need to make a move. Is 
is honestly quite a large map for the first go. Okay, a little icon has appeared here. That allows us to open the door quietly. If you move a soldier through the door, in this case I don't think it's an option because it's a corrugated door, but normally they would just kick their way through it, smash their way through it. It makes a lot of noise and it tells the aliens where we are. So opening it quietly is always better and it doesn't actually cost any movement points. You will also presumably note that we only have four soldiers at the moment. Alien life on Earth. We're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history. Okay. Which is one reason we have to be very careful. They never let us have more than six. Which means we're almost invariably outnumbered. Very unfair. Okay, so we've made our first contact. When you first discover the aliens officially, any group of aliens, they tend to come in groups of two or three, they immediately get a free move to dive for cover. Arguably a little unfair, especially because you can discover them because they've moved into your area of view, so they can never be entirely caught out. So, icons down here which I haven't fully covered, they do change depending on the situation. Each soldier is equipped with one grenade at the moment. Grenades are quite good in some ways because they never miss. Pretty much never. I can't actually recall what missing, so maybe they do never miss. If they don't do much damage, free damage is not very much. Although it's enough to kill one of these aliens. Sorry, this is slipping everywhere. I'm getting control back. You can actually see they're healthier, and they only have three health in this bar. So a grenade would be enough to kill them, but we can't throw it far enough. Okay, hunker down is something you will rarely use except when you don't have anything else you can do, or certainly something I'm rarely going to use. So the other option, apart from Overwatch, is fire. When you choose to fire on an alien, you get a percentage chance to hit. This is very important. So you see we have a better chance to hit this one than the other. It's going to be difficult to cope with this because humans are pretty bad at estimating probability. You need to remember that a 90% chance to hit is still going to miss one time in 10. But a 45 I think is worth a try under the circumstances. And you see it's missed. see what they do. Also going for overwatch. And this one's trying to fire. And they missed. So effectively they're in the same boat as us. However, if we now move this alien will fire us. It's not necessarily a problem, but under the circumstances it just makes more sense to have a 45% chance of taking them out. Okay, in this case I am going to move forward. I'm taking fire. That's missed, which is good. Overwatch attacks do often miss. There we go, progress. Kill confirmed. Their weapons appear to self-destruct when the operator dies. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own development programs. 
Sounds good to me, Dr. Valen. Right. Okay, closer. Can I reach with the front grenade right now? Maybe. I'm going to try it. Batter up! Commander, you may want to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. Yes, well... That's a much of opinion. Oh, trapped. So, this is me completely failing at uh, what I would normally recommend people do. Risk minimization. Go on, go on. So I should have made sure this area was clear. Moving that soldier over there. So he's effectively without cover. Nailed him. However, it would seem I may be unjustifiably lucky here, because we've taken one of the aliens out already. Soldier to full cover. Guarding this area while the others move in to deal with the actual known threat. As you see, 45 isn't too bad. 45%. Adjusting aim. Overwatch failing. I think arguably for this particular game, Overwatch isn't entirely recommended. But I still like it. He's down. Negative Good work ammo. out there, strike one. If I may, Commander, the labs are on high alert. Teams are standing by for your orders. We can begin researching the newly recovered artifacts immediately. Okay, brilliant. So we didn't lose anyone, which is the main thing. Which is why I wasn't particularly fussed about using the grenade. It's always better to keep your troops alive and ideally uninjured. If it's all possible. And now we're going to have a big introduction to the other side of the game. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. I'm Central Officer Bradford. My role in this project is twofold. Providing tactical support for our field operations, and keeping you briefed on the current situation. My efforts should allow you to focus on the bigger issues at hand. Speaking of which, we have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. Commander I'll let you get to it. Labs. Commander to the research labs. Exemplary performance. Let's hope all of these operations go as smoothly as this one did. Okay, brilliant. So we've got three promotions. The recovered artifacts are being unloaded and the research team is waiting your orders. We'll get started as soon as you give the order, Commander. And we have new things we can research now, based on what we have discovered. Okay, so this is the base. We'll have a proper look around. I'm just thinking, what's the best way to do this? Okay, so we did complain a little bit about wanting to. Commander give to the emotions. research labs. Commander to the research labs. But it sounds like we're going to be interrupted until we do the introductory sections. So let's go to the research labs. Hello, Commander. My name is Dr. Farlan. I oversee the research labs. This is where all of XCOM's research and development takes place. We have already begun analyzing the artifacts recovered from our first encounter with the aliens. Based on our preliminary findings, we believe we can use them to develop some new equipment for our soldiers. With your approval, we will begin research immediately. <laughs> I 
Okay, brilliant. We may as well cover this while we're at it. Okay, so the main thing that happens in the research lab is with Dr. Varlan, who bizarrely appears to be the only woman in the base, other than the soldiers. <laughs> Very strange. Is we can get her to research things. So we have three Commander options. Commander to engineering. Commander to engineering. Yes, okay. So, in theory, I think they would argue that xenobiology is the most important because it's to do with understanding the aliens. The other options are weapons and armor. Effectively, they do all the things. I would argue that we should probably start with weapons. Partly because some of the aliens, we haven't come across them yet, but some of them don't have weapons, they're hand to hand. And if you can gun them down before you get to you, they get to you, then the armor doesn't matter as much. Whereas if you can't, a lot of them are so powerful that any armor we manage to research in reasonable time isn't going to help. So I would argue that we need to work on our weapons first. Commander, I realize our troops have to put their own survival first, but every alien we use explosives against is one less opportunity to recover new artifacts. Okay. Point taken. I don't care. Ah, Commander. I was wondering when you'd be stopping by. Welcome to engineering. Anything they can dream up in the research labs, we can build it here. Speaking of which, Dr. Valen has just sent us some new schematics. With your approval, we will begin fabrication. Okay, so this is engineering. It's it has a few options. One of them. We've still is... got some room to grow up here. <laughs> but if we really want to expand our facilities, we're going to have to start excavating beneath the base. Unfortunately, the deeper we go, the more it's going to cost. Okay, so this one, build facilities, basically allows us to build more rooms in our base. One thing that's definitely worth noting and this is pretty much random every game, is when you have steam. This can allow you to relatively early on build a much better power room. So we do want to get Commander to the steam. To mission control. However, to mission for now, control. the other option is to build them by items. So this is where we make satellites. Satellites are going to be very important. But we can also make med kits. We are going to need at least one of these. Commander to mission control. Commander to mission control. I'll just put in one for now. Okay, so that's instantly made. Even though they're building it, it is instantly created. And the items you can build here tend to be based on your research. So you research items in the research labs and then you build them in the engineering labs. Nice and simple. Okay, mission control is apparently where we are supposed to be next. And they don't actually want us to do anything. So this is how you actually advance the game, is scan for activity. It makes time pass much faster. I suppose we could go straight for that, but I'm going to head back to the barracks. Okay, so the barracks. Officer training school. Very important. All of these are really useful. Probably the most important ones to get and the cheapest are squad size 1 and squad size 2. That basically allows us to take 5 people into the field and 6 people into the field respectively. But we can't do them until we get certain ranks. Okay. Higher soldiers, fairly straightforward. We have 13 soldiers, we will need more. It doesn't cost that much to hire them, but we're not in a huge hurry. View soldiers. So a lot of the time I'll do promotions and stuff when we're going on mission. You get a chance before the mission to do it when you decide who's going on it. But on this occasion, let's actually get it done here. We've had three soldiers who've been promoted, probably the three that actually killed aliens, and they've each been given a different role. These roles are vital. There are four of them, we're actually missing one which we'll presumably get after the next mission, hopefully. But it's going to briefly introduce them as we promote people. So let's
let's get started. Just like it sounds, the support class provides that intangible edge our squads need. They make everyone around them better. Okay, cool. So this is support. We've been given a smoke grenade. They are also usually the people you would equip with medkits. So we'll be giving this chap a medkit. We will cover the use of a smoke grenade. It does break, briefly explain it here. Anyone within range gets more defense. It does affect the aliens as well. Don't tend to use customize or dismiss. Loadout is what they're equipped with, which we will probably cover once we have time to equip them. Oh, actually, in this case, I want to swap the front grenade for a medikit. So the support guy is no longer going to have a grenade. Sniper. Our snipers specialize in dealing massive amounts of damage from afar, but without sufficient training, they're vulnerable in close combat situations. Probably my favorite unit. Um, we will cover this, but they do have options as to which path to go. I tend to always do the same path for each type of soldier because I like them to be interchangeable so I know what I'm dealing with. So yeah, to start with, the sniper has only got one new ability, headshot. But basically they're extremely deadly, but they can't move and fire. So yeah. Quite tricky to use at the start, but they get much more usable later on. Pretty rapidly, actually. And we've got a heavy. The heavy weapons specialist provides a crucial service to the squad. With the rocket launcher in tow, there are demolitions experts. Okay, so they get a rocket, which is far more dangerous than a grenade and will fire faster. So, very useful, and I'm going to be upsetting Dr. Valen by using it to blow things up. Okay, brilliant. So that's all our soldiers. I think that's really the important stuff. I don't think they actually cover the hangar in any kind of tutorial. So we can briefly look at that. So at the moment, we have a base in Europe. We have nothing in the other four basic locations. And we have two ships equipped with avalanche missiles, which is the standard equipment. They will be good for shooting down smaller craft. Okay, so kind of covered everything a bit. We've got some research going, which is good. So at this point, if we go back to mission control, we're just going to scan for activity. You can see what's coming up. The council report is vitally important. So we're going to need to keep an eye on that, but we probably won't get to it this time. So let's just scan for activity. There we go. So we've got an alien abductions. Commander, we've picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. Okay, so this tends to happen. They always have three sides. They all want help, and we can only help one of them. So this is going to come into play afterwards, but basically whoever we help is going to be happy, but everyone we don't help is going to raise panic. Under the circumstances, at the moment, as it doesn't make any obvious difference, I think it's best to get money, because I never seem to have enough, partly because I'm sparing with satellites. So at the moment, let's go for the one that offers us money. Okay, so this is the same team we had last time. We can swap people out. I'm inclined to keep them in because it will allow us to have a look at how the new types of soldier behave. So let's just stick with them. But this is the point where you could do promotions and change people's equipment if needed. Australia has sent a number of requests for assistance, so that's our next drop site. We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. 
So this is basically the same as the last mission. There are no civilians. So our only actual task is to eliminate all the aliens. And try not to get killed. Central, this is Big Sky. Strike team is touching down now. Standing by for your orders. Roger, Big Sky. Reading you five by five. Strike one has the green light for deployment. Okay. So we're in a corner again, which is good. And we're basically facing a big building and a courtyard. So as before, our first concern is probably to get into cover. However, it's a lot less obvious which direction attacks may come from. Okay, so, this is our sniper. So she has moved into cover, however, she cannot do overwatch. Can actually throw a grenade, which I wasn't aware of. But, uh, which does make sense, we can also swap the weapon for a pistol, which would allow her to do overwatch. Under the circumstances, I tend to just hunker down. Effectively, the sniper isn't going to be able to move. I believe anyone within this range will get extra defense because she's hunkered down, which makes no sense whatsoever, but I think that's what it's for. But yeah, in effect, she has to stay still and hope that an enemy comes within range of her, which is going to be a little tricky. It's worth trying to develop your snipers up because they become much more different, much more useful with the next promotion. Even at this stage, the sniper's still useful in the sense of you can put them somewhere. Okay, we're good and they can effectively defend that position. So even though at the moment she can't actually move and she relies on aliens coming within range, if we can leave her there on Overwatch, we can be pretty sure nothing is going to attack us from this direction. So we can relatively safely move everyone over to this building, which I'm quite keen to do because the courtyard's a bit exposed. I feel like going through the building gives us a much better chance of survival. Okay, so there is something over What's there. Making that noise? I often put the snipers on overwatch first. Probably doesn't make as much sense at the moment, but later on they will gain the ability to fire on things that other people can see. So if we discover an enemy, there's a decent chance the sniper may be able to fire on them. Let's move this one first. Gonna dash you into position. And you too actually, I'm gonna go for full cover over here. Let's put you on Overwatch. Okay, so there could be aliens on this side of the building. But we don't really have enough soldiers to check that out at the moment. So I'm going to quietly open this door. Which, remember, doesn't actually cost any movement at all. Here they come. Okay. So under some circumstances the sniper could have made a shot against them. But she didn't. Out of the game. But she's still there, so there's always a chance that if we need her she will come through. Excellent. Clearly uh, he has, Gordon has a great um, sense of melodrama. There's a perfectly open door but he goes and jumps through a window. Okay, 
that seems right. deep, I have to say. So what, she couldn't see him to shoot at him, but he can see her? Oh right, okay, so you can see him now. So we'll, we've got two options, fire and headshot. Headshot basically does more damage. I don't think... Yeah, they've got the same chance to hit, 55%. Hell. <laughs> These are weak enough and I don't think we actually needed headshots, but why not use it? I have to say, <laughs> being very lucky on this occasion. Check this room, can't see anyone, okay. on the safe side. Nothing so far. Alien on Overwatch again. If you here, full cover, much better. And likewise, full cover. So see, we're not often dashing. Sticking to things we can reach and still either fire or go to Overwatch. I know I said I wasn't going to tear into this game specifically, but um, to be fair, it's logical to try and get the best cover you can. It doesn't make perfect sense. Okay, 45, I think that's justifiable. Taking Seriously being of. very lucky on this mission. Is <laughs> could there be some here? So what I was thinking was, if we discovered some aliens in this direction, I was going to dash to get cover. Okay, sudden dramatic music. Even though she hasn't actually discovered anything new, but I'll just put her on Overwatch. Here, also on Overwatch. I know there's at least one more alien in this direction. If we're very lucky, that might be all of them. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. That would have been great cover if it wasn't beyond the boundaries of what we can reach. Right, I'm going to dash here. Even if it means being dramatic again. Hmm. Okay, so the alien was using Overwatch and we've taken an injury. Not ideal. Look how me out. He's down. Mission accomplished. That's not bad. At least it wasn't a critical injury. I think the soldiers do take some damage to willpower. Certainly if you get critically injured. But we're just gonna have to ignore it because we're not gonna be able to avoid being injured. We're just gonna have to accept it. Commander to the situation room. 
Commander, to the Situation Room. Okay, so we've got our final promotion. The guy who got injured has become an Assault Class. And this is what happens, so panic has increased across North America and Europe. We will be in We're touch, about to find Commander. out what that means. Every member of the Council is going to want satellite coverage, so we should plan our deployments carefully. Okay, maybe we're not. So what this basically means is we're getting our funding and our support from a worldwide council of nations. They've left an awful lot of nations out, as you can doubtless see. Um, they've tried to split them into five areas. So I think Europe is these four. So it looks like panic has increased this is a panic level, has increased more in the nations that are actually asking for help. It's gone up by two, I think. Whereas in the other members of that continent, or area, I suppose, it's only gone up by one. It's still pretty bad though. What basically happens is, when we get to the council meeting at the end of the month, any nation whose panic level is on five will withdraw. I'm receiving you. We'll monitor that contact, but I don't think it's related to the UFO activity will withdraw from the council and if eight nations withdraw that's this doomsday thing up here we have lost the game so we need to do everything we can to keep them on board plus we gain funding and such like and we also gain extra bonuses from having nations in like if we get all of a particular area all of north america say so it's Mexico's North America, isn't it? I was thinking, is it Central America? Well, no, there's plenty of it in the north. Um, that gives us the Nothing bonus we would have got Boards are clear. from building our base there. So let's see, how does this actually work? I think China, Japan, India and Australia make up Asia. Germany, France, Russia and the United Kingdom make up Europe, so we've already got the bonus for the United Kingdom and because our base in Germany, we've got plus 100 funding from them. Apparently we started with a satellite actually, so maybe that's why. So we can get more funding by sending satellites. The reason I don't want to do that is because sending a satellite, just sending one, not uh, waiting for it to arrive, which I think takes three days, but just sending one reduces panic by one. So it's worth keeping satellites ready. Been picking up some odd transmissions lately. <laughs> some nut calling himself Commander Straker has been all over the news ranting about shadow operatives. Thanks, Bradford. So if we're approaching the council meeting and anyone has a panic level of five, we want to fire a satellite the day before the council meeting, or just before it happens, and that will keep them in the council. Okay, so top three here will be North America. Does that mean Argentina and Brazil alone are South America? They must be. And Egypt, South Africa, Nigeria or Africa. So, fair enough. So the other th things we can do, we can launch satellite. I believe we have one in reserve, but we could do it getting some more just in case, because you can see panic levels are already climbing. We can view our finances, they're not that important. Visit the grain market, this is Several where we can of the council sell have expressed things. an interest in acquiring some of the artifacts we've recovered. However, we should be careful in choosing what items we release. The research team may not have discovered their true value yet. Yeah, I mean, this is true. I will usually not sell much if I can possibly avoid it. <laughs> One of the things you especially don't want to sell, uh, not so much sectoid corpses, but some of the earlier enemies will stop appearing later in the game. And their heavier counterparts <laughs> don't give you the same abilities. Most of these corpses can be used for something, so I'd be very reluctant to sell corpses if we can avoid it. Might be difficult if we different if we get a request for them, because they're often quite well rewarded. But as a rule I'm gonna try not to sell things. Okay, so let us do this final promotion. If we can. The assault class serves as our front line. They're the first ones into a fight, and the last ones out. Okay, so we'll see this ability in action. I think the only one we've really seen particularly so far was the sniper with the headshot, which isn't a particularly exciting ability, but it does come in useful against the more powerful enemies. But yeah, this can be quite useful. 
The main concern you tend to have with the assault class is that they're often the cut of a shotgun instead of an assault rifle, which makes them deadlier at close range, but it can actually be a massive pain because they're not very good at range. And as I'm usually trying to be very cautious, range is usually how I like to do things. Okay, we still can't use that. So, we have 440 credits now. I would like to start moving towards this steam area. So we're going to start going down. Work crews are on their way to begin construction. I'll send word when the new facility is operational. Okay, we're also going to need more satellite uplinks, but we're, we're going to need power for some of these too. So this probably makes the most sense at the moment. I don't know if I can make another satellite uplink or not, or if I would just be better off trying to get more satellites. Commander, our current satellite uplink facilities are at full capacity. We should build additional uplinks as soon as possible to allow for new satellite deployments. So there you go. I don't think satellites are made instantly. They're kind of ordered. But we definitely need a satellite uplink. However, oh no, we don't have engineers. Right. So... In terms of building rooms, at the moment we've got the satellite uplink, which we do need. Notice there's a bonus for having it next to another one, which is why I was intending to build it here. I think the bonus goes down as well, so I'll probably try and make a, a group of four. We can build a power generator anywhere, but we can also build a thermo generator, which is better but it has to be built over steam vents. Again, there's an adjacency bonus, so while we'll probably build the steam generator first, we may build power generators either side, depending, because there are better power generators you can get later on. Okay, so I think that's everything for that bit. Let's spin time on again. Contact detected. So this is an actual enemy craft. We're going to try to shoot it down. This is mostly automated. There are things you can do, but we don't have any of those yet, so our only option would be to abort, which I'm probably not going to do. We have eyes on the bandit. This should be doable. See if we're getting damaged. Oh, we shot them down already. Brilliant. Central, this is Voodoo 37. We have a confirmed kill on Bogey 001. I repeat, the UFO is down. I'll copy over. Solid copy, Voodoo 37. Nice work. Central out. All right, people. Retask recon satellite Bravo and get me a visual on that crash site. She's coming into range now, sir. On screen. Magnify. Still in one piece. Commander, I recommend we get a strike team to the crash site immediately. I could not agree more. Okay, so we're going to send Sky Ranger, which is our troop transport. Our assault specialist is still injured, so we've got a new rookie. Which is fair enough. One of the things about these squads is we do want to rotate people a bit. So, although I've been sticking with the same people so far, at some point we might want to send some rookies on a mission. Rather than uh, keeping using the same people, because we need to get a lot of experienced soldiers if we can. But for now, especially seeing as we've got a rookie anyway, due to injury. We have visual on the mission site, setting down. Our target site is near the German border. It looks like the aliens went down in a sparsely populated area. If there are civilians in the area, I hope they stay clear. Yeah, there aren't going to be any civilians. Loud and clear, Big Sky. 
We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike one is authorized to assault the alien craft. Okay, so probably going to finish there. I often do finish at the start of a new mission. But yeah, it looks like we've got corners here. So, <laughs> but still only four people. We really need to fix that as soon as we get the right promotion. <sighs> Feels like such a small squad. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. And um, yeah, hopefully, this is actually useful to someone. And uh, we'll just try and stick with it. And hopefully, it won't turn into an absolute disaster. Because I don't play this game perfectly by any means. So there is always a chance I might completely lose. But <laughs> usually, I should be able to win on normal mode. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway. Thank you for watching and I shall see you next time.